Hello, and welcome to Fat Talk. As we continue with the sequel on lipids, we are going to explore today if there is such a thing as a healthy fat. And so my question before we begin is, do you remember what a lipid is? It's the first question on your homework set. And, oh, Joey's raising his hand. Joey? Joey's here live. He could answer, but he's not anything that is hydrophobic. And fats are indeed one type, and that's what we're going to explore. Oh, but before we look at different types of fats, so like you've heard of coconut oil, uh, is it healthy? How about walnuts? Mm, are they healthy? Or my cat, this is cat, my cat, Rocky. With the avocado nose. How about avocados? We're going to explore that today. So it is biochemistry. What is the biochemical term for fat? Well, what fat is, is glycerol. And then we're going to add three fatty acids. That's what the squigglies are right now. These are all saturated because they're just, there's no kink. And we get what's called a triester of glycerol. Uh, or more commonly known as a triglyceride. So tri meaning three fats and glyceride means glycerol molecule. And we are gonna draw these, don't worry, we're gonna go over some other stuff first. Uh, but there you go, there is the word. And if you ever get your blood tested, uh, this is one of the things they will often look for and they do label it as TG. The correct biochemical name is triacyl or acyl glyceride. Uh, and so it is because it's three fatty acids attached. So these red balls are the oxygens. And you can see this is very hydrophobic. It's all black and white. Uh, and so this one's all saturated and this has kinks. So these are fats and oils. A is not necessarily a fat. So a fat does not mean saturated and an oil is unsaturated fatty acids. What the actual difference is, is a fat means it is a triglyceride that comes from an animal source. An oil is a triglyceride that comes from a plant source. Oils tend to have lots of kinks, except there are some exceptions to that. So coconut oil is correctly called coconut oil, but it is mostly saturated. Uh, animal sources of triglycerides like in us, our body just stores and doesn't want to put the kinks in because we just go into storage mode. Uh, but there is fish oils are actually fish fats. Uh, so cold water fish have a lot of kinks in there and that's the lecture next week. That's the fifth one in the series. All right, let's look at the functions first, and then we will see a video clip on how to draw on them. So triglyceride functions, well, they have many. And this polar bear is a great example. Uh, their biggest one, this is their main purpose, is to store energy. They are our long-term storage of energy. That's why the polar bear can hibernate for so long, because they have a lot of fat stored and then during hibernation, their body will burn the fat. And you and I are storing energy as fat. And the reason for that is because it is mostly carbons. Uh, and so the carbon ends up, you don't really need to know this, but this is chemistry. Uh, without all the oxygens, like in glucose and all the other carbohydrates, uh, without all those oxygens, the carbon actually has a higher potential energy because it has a higher oxidation number, and therefore there's more calories per gram. So if you ever look at a box, I don't know of cereal or crackers or highly processed food, which maybe you've thrown them all out, which is great. But next time if you go to a store, uh, which is harder to do these days than usual, if you look at a box, you can have the same number of grams of sugar and the same number of grams of fat, but then you'll have twice the number of calories of fat. And this is why. All right, one of those piece of information makes you feel really smart. This is another purpose, which is insulation. So when we think of the animals that are from northern climates or very southern climates, uh, north and south pole, 
they have lots of insulation. So you think Santa Claus also, right? All right. Oh, and there's another use as a shock absorber. Uh, so if you've been pregnant, you get a nice fatty layer to protect the baby. Uh, most of our fat is in our belly area uh, around our vital organs to help protect them. Uh, and so this was just another example of insulation. Um, this is like me at night with my dog and cat. Thankfully, they're pretty much smaller than baby polar bears. And there's mama protecting. It's a shock absorber. They're also space fillers. So if we didn't have any fat at all, our organs would all collapse into each other. All right, and vitamin storage of the fat soluble ones. You don't need to remember these, but A, D, E, and K, uh, if we minimize, if we go with the minimalist theory and minimize things to just the lettered vitamins, these would be the four that are fat soluble, but anything that we store that is hydrophobic would be stored with that. And another purpose is it makes our food yummy or palatable and so we want to eat it because it's really yummy and so if you've watched one of the sugar documentaries or when you do watch one of the sugar documentaries it is something they talk about when we went on the low fat kick the food became tasted like cardboard so we added in a lot of sugar and salt um, so since we're talking about palatability what is your fat bliss point? Well, it turns out, I mean, really, fat tastes amazing. It turns out the place I talked about the sugar bliss point, and we all have a perfect bliss point. You all have your favorite type of apple, and that's your bliss point. You can think about it with sugar, um, the sugary cereals, too, when you're a kid. You can also think about it with apples. Like, I love the pink lady apples, and Joey likes Fuji or Gala better. Um, but we each have our perfect apple. And they did the same experiment with fat. So they made each bowl have a little bit more fat. And they had people go through and taste it and tell when they got to the point where they didn't like it anymore. And guess what happens? There is no such thing. Your bliss point for fat is more. Could I just have more? Every single person. This one's good. This one's better. Is there more? Can we put more fat on this? And so you're eventually like this kitty cat licking the butter. And if you leave the butter out and you have a cat, they will most definitely do that. And when I taught this, everybody in the class is nodding because they've had a dog or cat do this and the ants will go all over the butter as opposed to the fake margarine I showed the picture last week. All right, so I have this question. What's the fat percentage in butter? You know, multiple choice, pop quiz. So I'll tell you what, it's not pie. It's not 3% fat. And it is definitely more than 50%. Um, yeah, definitely more than 50%. It is 82%. You know, it's interesting because most people want to pick 98%. So I actually, we usually do in lab where we make butter. So I will probably give you the option. Um, it comes out freaking delicious when you make your own butter but you have to shake like crazy and Joey's really good at making butter he always wins this contest he can make it in 30 seconds um, we should take a video of Joey making butter and you will all go is he for real but this is not a video of Joey that's not what Joey looks like uh, he has aged well yes um, so butter has been prepared for at least 4,000 years that picture is not from India this is a <coughs> ancient picture from India um, that's apparently 4,000 years old and it shows them churning butter. Uh, and so most of us think of that classic wooden butter churn. Um, this is another way, this was actually more classic than just the churn, is you can actually turn it. And so the little boy, this would be Joey in his previous life, he's turning and churning the butter. Um, and most cultures, many cultures actually do it a different way. And I always ask, does anybody have any idea? And if somebody's from the Middle East, they know the answer. Uh, and it is animal skin that is sewn together. A little hole is left and you put the fatter milk in there and then you suspend it and then you swing it until the butter forms. Um, 
and it works beautifully. This is a picture of Joey. Uh, I took of Joey uh, when we were in Nepal up high in the Himalayas. I don't know if this place is still there. This was the cheese factory, but they also made um, butter. And so this is the thing and they would crank it all done by hand. Joey got to do it. And this is the buttermilk coming out. So you can make your buttermilk pancakes. So what's left when they pull all the fat out for the butter. Uh, and this is the guys, I have a picture later. These are the yaks. So this is from the Himalayas. These are some of my pictures. It's part of why we're doing this because I have some of my pictures in here. Um, and yaks have, yeah. So my question is, how many pounds of milk does it take to make just one pound of butter? A is the golden ratio, but it turns out not to be the golden ratio. It's also not pi. This is the heat capacity of water, which my other class would know. So I'll leave you with D or E. So how much milk do you need to make the butter? And this is guys take in the milk from the yak. They milk their yaks and bring it to the cheese factory. And they are bringing it all day and the next day and the next day. It takes 21.2 pounds of milk to make just one pound of butter. And in Nepal, in the Himalayas, they are Buddhist and the Tibetan monks, the Sherpas, um, and all the folks in the Himalayas they use butter for butter lamps and everything for their candles um, for burning and stuff. This is butter vats. Uh, so that was a lot of milk to make that much butter. This is a picture of Joey and his dad Pimba drinking butter um, tea. So they actually add butter to the tea there and it's delicious. Uh, this is the head nun from the highest monastery in the world at Rumbuk. And she came over, it was the worst tea house in the world. It was the most awful food. Joey fasted for two or three days. I did not fast because I don't do well at elevation, so I needed to eat, but Joey and Pimba did fast, um, except when this nun came over. And then we actually got better food because they were like, oh my gosh, the head nun knows you. But it turned out Pimba had saved her father's life 20 years before. Um, and when we were over at the monastery, he was speaking in Tibetan to the head monk, and she happened to hear it, and then she showed up at our room and brought us tea and sat and talked for like an hour. Um, and yeah, it was such a cool experience. All right, this is not in the Himalayas. But in the summer, cows are actually pasture fed, and the milk cream has more beta carotene because they're eating the grass. So the butter is actually a deeper yellow tint, and that is beta carotene. I have a slide on there to remind you, once again, you do pick a topic. Uh, I actually listened to a really cool talk today by T. Colin Campbell, and he talked about a study. I actually heard about this. Uh, and when they gave people, they had cancer, and they treated them with beta carotene, and half of them, they had them eat a diet high in beta carotene, and the other half, they gave them the supplement. And what they found, they had to stop the study. The people they gave the supplement, giving them really high levels, actually the cancer got worse. And the people who ate the food, it got better. Because supplements, where you isolate a single thing, it doesn't do the same thing as when it's in the whole food. But anyway, here's a molecule beta carotene. You could choose to do it. And what else is beta carotene? Well, the name comes from carrots, but anything that's this beautiful orange or yellow or red, so those lower wavelengths, those are filled with beta carotene. So peppers, all those squashes, uh, carrots, even oranges have some. Uh, the highest source is not actually carrots, but one of the other things that beta carotene does, besides making your cells amazing and really great for cancer when it's in the whole food, uh, is it's really good for your eyesight, is red hot chili peppers. Um, but you have to eat so many of them. Um, so it's a lot easier to eat a lot of carrots. In the winter, the cows eat mostly stored uh, forage, and so the butter is much lighter color. So, um, all right, so you're gonna do a video now. And so you can pause me, get your paper. We're gonna practice drawing. So these are gonna be your fatty acids you're gonna draw. And what's different from this practice, uh, so a reminder, the number is how many carbons, so they're all gonna be 16. And I go through this in there. 
Um, but so before you start the video, put it on pause and see if you can remember how to draw these. But what we're going to do is we're going to take it a step further and we're going to make it into a triglyceride. So I'm back and let's do some practice drawing some fatty acids and then we're going to build it into a triglyceride. All right, so the first number for all these, we're going to do 16 carbons. The second number is how many double bonds? So saturated, SFA, MUFA, and PUFA. Uh, and then remember omega-6 and omega-3 tells us how far from the end. So you can pause me and try it, uh, and then erase and retry it once I do it. Um, no trans. If there's trans, I would say trans. Remember if there's trans, you go, yes, it's a trans. It comes out just like the saturated. So we're going to draw our, you can draw the carbon in if you like. And if you show the carbon, then you do your zigzags from there. So I have, this will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. You want to be really nice to me like on the quizzes. Actually, number every other one or every fourth one. Uh, so I don't have to keep counting. But I do count if you don't to make sure you got it right. All right. For the monounsaturated, this is a MUFA, this one's a PUFA. So monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and saturated. Uh, again, this is going to give us a kink like that. So we're going to have like a downhill, uh, and we're going to have to start down here. And so we're going to go two, four, six. So this is my omega end, so 2, 4, at 6 to 7 is where my kink happens, um, and I found the students actually get much better at this than me, so this is 7, this is 8, so 10, 12, 14, this here, so this would be my 16, 16 is your double bonded O, and that will happen sometimes that your oxygen, if it's a downhill where you end up, the oxygen double bonded points down and then your O will point up. All right, so that's what my MUFA looks like. Let's make my double bond look a little better. And now we're gonna do two. So this one is gonna come out like this. More because there's two double bonds, so it's gonna come out uh, because of the double kink. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to do this one. I'm going to show you a mistake uh, where you would have to erase like I am. Uh, so if you go one, two, so this is one, two, this is three, and there's your double bond. Your kink is going this way. And, and that's absolutely fine, but we're going to put these all together with a triglyceride. Uh, just realize you're moving that way if so if something like that happened and you're like, oh, I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way because I want them all to come out similar. Uh, you're going to want to start then your kink, your zigzagging. Instead of going this way, we're going to want to start this way. One, two, three. So three, omega three. First double bond is at three to four. And then this is five, so this is six to seven. So this is eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. And there we have it. So more kinks. These guys have kinks. Kinks mean that they're fluid. Kink means, yeah, you're not going to get stuck. This one is going to stack because of the zigzag, and that's going to make it a solid. Uh, something I didn't talk about, that's a question that you'll run into. The more it stacks, the higher the melting point. Also, the more carbons. Stacking is the big difference. Uh, if you had two things that could stack, and you're asked which one has a higher melting point, 
more carbons. If you have stacking versus kinks, more kinks. So more double bonds decreases your melting point. So MP is melting point, not military police. They're not coming to get me because my nose is up on my squid hat. All right, we are now going to put this and make a triglyceride. So let's do this on the other board. Because we're gonna do two steps here in one video. Three steps in one video, practice. And, all right, we're gonna make it into a triglyceride. So TG, abbreviation for triglyceride. Used to be TAG, which would be the correct biochemical term, but we simplified it to TG. Triglycerides um, are one of many things that are associated with a risk, again, it's always a risk, for a higher um, chance of heart attack and stroke. Uh, and that is because in our body, our triglycerides are gonna be made up of saturated fats and they stack up. So they're what's in the clot. So when they've analyzed these clots over decades and decades, the clots were always coming back that they were saturated fats and cholesterol. Um, they don't come back that they're broccoli and apples. Broccoli and apples don't make stacks. They actually help to break them up. So a triglyceride means you're gonna have glycerol plus three fatty acids. So the tri is three. So we're gonna put three fatty acids. Sorry, I have a funky angle going on here. Let's see if that works better. All right. Three carbons, that's glycerol. And glycerol, the OL is an alcohol, it's a tri-alcohol. So this is glycerol. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add fatty acid to each one. So we're gonna do our saturated one. So let's draw our saturated fatty acid here. And for now, let's, we'll just keep it like that so we see the idea. And I talk about this as cowgirl, cowboy chemistry. Uh, you lasso the water. So I'm gonna have to be cow squid or squid girl chemistry. So squids also can lasso and you lasso your water molecule. And water is two hydrogens and an oxygen. So you lasso off an OH and an H. It doesn't matter which OH you pull off and which H, it's gonna come out the same. So what happens, I have the magic that well, I can draw it down below, and this would happen at each position. Um, I'm just to keep it simple for us. Put our kink in there, and we'll draw our other one. So this is my three fatty acids. Um, all right. Circle my water molecule each time. So glycerol plus three fatty acids. We are going to make a triglyceride. So, arrow, carbon, carbon, carbon. The good news is I get it right low, so maybe I won't hurt my shoulder as much. All right, there is still one oxygen coming off the carbon. Lost the hydrogen, and it goes straight to the carbon that is hooked to the double bonded O and then you do your zigzags. So you can show that carbon, or you can just go straight like this and do your zigzags. And if you have a kink, you put your kink in there and you can draw them. You do the best you can. Now, if this was the real deal, like a test or a quiz, you're gonna try and draw it as best you can, as close to those pictures over there that we just did, because what you're gonna do on a quiz is you're gonna draw three fatty acids and then you're gonna build it into a triglyceride. Um, so that's what our body does. Now, 
there is the opposite reaction. And so if we went that way, where we took the triglyceride and we cut it apart into the glycerone three fatty acids, that is called hydrolysis. So you will see a question where it's gonna ask you to hydrolyze. It's just gonna say, hey, can we cut that apart? Uh, and so you would take your fatty acid and you would just cut it into the glycerol in the three pieces and you would cut it, pull it apart, and then each side gets an OH. So on our glycerol, because it's over here, uh, we show O's, and on my fatty acid, I'll have to show them as O's. So now they're separate again. That would be hydrolysis, taking the triglyceride and pulling it apart. Okay, we're gonna do one more step. And we'll do another practice at some point or on your homework. And that is, there is one more reaction that you can do. So hydrolysis again. Lysis means to cut. Hydro means water. So you use water to cut. So hydrolysis of a triglyceride goes back to glycerol plus three fatty acids. This is what happens when we do digestion. Oh, we don't watch that again. How do I go to the next slide? So um, I keep going, but that's in the next slideshow. And that is besides hydrolysis, which would be the opposite of this, hydrolysis is taking the fat and cutting it back down to glycerol and three fatty acids, which is what happens in digestion. Um, so we need to absorb the individual fatty acids. Uh, and then our liver puts it back together and ships it out. Um, and in the next video, I'll be talking about the other possibility is you could also do saponification. Um, and I decided to make that a separate video because since I don't get to see you. Um, so again, the biochemical term for fat is a triglyceride. The original, the correct term is a triacylglyceride because uh, three fatty acids. So they used to be called TAG, T, capital T-A-G, but now they just say triglyceride. So we'll go with that. Um, so back to milk. We'll talk about milk again. Cow is feeling left out. Um, so the question I have is why is there fat in milk? Well, it helps the animals quickly put on more fat, meaning the baby animals. And so there's the yak and the baby yak. And they have these huge tails and they have eyeballs that are like the size of your head and these horns oh my gosh they are like bigger than a minotaur horn and that i walk really slow and i remember pimba saying don't look the yak in the eye because we got really close to these yaks when we were up high because we we're in the middle of nowhere uh and i was just walking so slow and i was just like this cat here staring at the yak i was really a foot away joey was like miles ahead because i was walking so slow and the yak must have been just thinking like you know if you ever have you ever stopped and watch a slug they really don't move very far and that's what i must look like to the yak he probably did not know what i was because he'd never seen anything move as slow as i was but anyway the fat content in animal milk ranges from 1.2 percent like over 50%. So my question is, what animals have the highest? Well, those that live in really cold climate because fat's an insulator. So yeah, the colds, the cows from way up north. What's the purpose of protein in milk? Milk's the perfect food for babies. It helps animals grow and build muscle. That, that's not, that's like male cow stud that who knows what's going on. And what's the purpose of the carbohydrates? This is fascinating. Carbohydrates help your brain to develop. Carbs get such a bad name, but they make you smarter. And these are all photoshopped, not by me. So here's a question for you, just for fun. Usually we would have just had a quiz. So I just tried to put a few fun slides in. Is what's the highest fatty milk consumed by humans? Well, not the fattest cow, but could be cow milk. 
How about yak milk? Anything cold? Sheep? Camel? Some cultures do eat cam drink camel's milk. That doesn't look like it's from a cold culture though. Uh, water buffalo. So I had several students from um, the Philippines last year and they immediately were like, oh, ooh, they knew what that was. They could say the word correctly. Uh, horse milk. So yeah, up in, this is Mongolia, I think they do consume. And this is goat's milk. Joey and I got to try when we stayed with the goat herder. And if you listen to what I was saying, cold climate, reindeer milk. There you go, 22.5%. But you're going, wait, wait, the previous slide, she said something about 53%. Yes, but my question here was the ones we actually consume. Humans do not consume the milk of a gray seal, but uh, also whales have really high percentage fat in their milk, the whales that are from the really northern. Um, so, thank you. All right, if... This is not a healthy thing to do. We are not doing this in lab. You're not doing this at home. There is no bonus points for eating the most butter in under a minute. All right, these guys all have like names that the gentlemen, why? Uh, so anybody, yeah, you can also, I have the website here. If you wanna look at the most disgusting, they're really disgusting eating records. <laughs> Because eating one stick of butter is disgusting. And again, you don't get any bonus points for doing this. So, Ebeth, don't do this. Don't do this at home. All right, who eats a stick of butter? Well, this guy, Don Lerman, he ate not one stick, not two, not three, not four, not five. <laughs> We're up to six. I believe he ate seven sticks of butter. He looks like he's quite a large man. And he looks like he's about to vomit. I, I don't understand. Why would anybody do this? There you go. If you want, you can go back and just Google the most disgusting records. And this is probably what is going on. Yeah, this made Kenna also hungry. Don't make this sandwich at home. Did we, we, I didn't get to talk about how bacon is a class one carcinogen with plutonium. So if you're going to eat this, you might as well just go out and start licking plutonium. Just go to Hanford. It's not that far away. Anyway, if you're going to eat like that, like Don did, butter, uh, yeah, that's, that's an artery. That is clogging up. And your blood isn't going to get through there, and eventually it closes off. And this, this is all like fat, saturated fat. And when they analyze it, we're going to talk about cholesterol and a lot of the a lot of misconceptions out there and poorly done research. Um, anyway, if you keep it real and eat real food, if you eat real food, this isn't going to happen. If you're going to eat this kind of food, this is going to happen. All right, let's move on. This is just a slide that is from that book I think I posted. This is just a breakdown. So the purples are the PUFAs, the polyunsaturated, which we're told, oh, that's good, more polyunsaturated. But if you remember, polyunsaturated, lots of double bond oxidation. And it's already been processed. We're going to talk about that. And down here, oh, the coconut oil, it's saturated. It's mostly saturated. And then there's the myth. Oh, how about the ones in the middle? So let's look at the myth. Oh, let's start with coconut oil and the health benefits. And if you want to do your topic on coconut oil, go for it. Except I've already done it. I went down the rabbit hole. So topically, yes, it prevents wrinkles. Great for hair, all this stuff. Oh, and it's really big for all those ketos. I heard this great talk today about keto, and they said they should call it, I want to imitate being in diabetic acidosis diet. Um, anyway, we'll talk about the keto diet eventually. Uh, keto diet is really big into this, the MCT oil. MC stands for medium chain fatty acids. So coconut oil has fatty acids that are not long and not short. So short chain is probably four or six. Four or six carbon chain fatty acids are pretty much consumed and used as energy. The longer chain ones are the ones we store. Medium chain 
the claim is, is that they're used and they promote your thyroid. They promote, they help um, keep everything healthy and they give you more energy, more vitality and all these things. And so that's what the MCT oil is all about. And coconut oil is really high in caprylic and caprylic acid, something like that. Um, and so I went on this kick many, many years ago. And I also did the thing where you put coconut oil in your mouth every morning and you keep it in there for 30 seconds to two minutes and um, it cleans out your mouth and there's nothing like it. I won't recommend it anymore because anyway, so these are the ads. It turns your on your brain fuel for your body or something. And this is what it's called. So it's bulletproof. It's a guy from Silicon Valley. I've seen talks from him. He's a really good spokesman and he's making lots of money off of this and causing a lot of people to become very ill in their arteries. So we're going to get there. But anyway, if you want to still believe the myth, because this guy's a really good spokesman, here you go. And if you don't like coffee, but you want to do it, you just add some chocolate. And you add for every cup one of the high quality brewed, here you go, Riley, high quality brewing, one tablespoon of the MCT oil. This stuff's so expensive. One tablespoon of grass-fed butter, and you can add some cocoa. You can add, oh, look at this is the best part. We're using stevia as a sweetener, so no sugar. We're good. And the amount of sugar they would be adding. But this is okay because we're adding all this oil and this is gonna make your brain so healthy. This is actually a picture from the Himalayas also. So we've gone over the, not the highest pass in the world. We'd already done that. We went over the most gnarly, awful pass that there ever could be in the world and we did not have any food. We ran out of food and it took us a long time to get down. This was the first people we saw after like five days. It was this little, we were so happy and they made us butter tea and this is real butter tea and so they have these churners and this is this guy's hovel uh, and he is perfectly safe right now. This is his roof and he was the most hospitable man. I did not understand a word he said but I did not need to. He was so kind. He's probably the same age as me. Um, yeah, this is it. This is his life. And he was so happy and so kind and just pure compassion. And the tea was amazing. And Joey refused to eat it. And so I got two cups of it and absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, so I went to my doctor like two years ago for some reason. Oh, I think a checkup, right? The once every year, two years, three years checkup. And she decided, oh, let's just do a bunch of blood tests on you. And I got back and my numbers are phenomenal, except I had low vitamin D. That's the one that concerned me. And my cholesterol was high. It was above the 200 mark. And I was like, what? Uh, and so it didn't really concern me. I'm not worried about that. We do a cholesterol talk next. Um, but I was really curious as to why. And then one day I was getting ready for this talk a year ago and I ran into this article, the seven side effects of coconut oil you should be aware of. And I went down a rabbit hole and I was in shock. And this is the, these are some of my coworkers. I told them I was using the slide. Uh, and so if you had, this is Dr. Whitman, this is Bernadette. So for your Chem 104, you may have had one of them. Uh, they don't want to hear it or see it. I didn't want to hear it, but coconut oil and cholesterol. So as I said, I used to do that um, pooling, oil pooling. I don't do it anymore. I just use water. Uh, it doesn't work quite as freaking amazing. The oil pooling is amazing, but I don't do it anymore. Um, and so these are pictures, rabbit arteries. This is from India. This is normal. As you can see, there's no like major blockages. These are ones fed coconut oil. And you can see they start having blockages. Uh, so the average plasma total cholesterol was double and their triglycerides, the triglycerides were 20 fold higher in the coconut oil fed rabbits. The control group, they were fed the same percentage, but olive oil. Don't recommend that either, but that's in a couple slides. Uh, and they also showed insulin resistance, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high insulin levels, and hyperplasia and hypertrophy of the beta cells in the pancreas, which is what makes the insulin. 
you're pretty much getting whammied in every way possible. And so this is, this is me saying, I don't want to give up my coconut oil. I knew all these things before it became a fad and I don't do it anymore. Anyway, Kerala, India. I apologize. I don't know how to say it. Uh, it is the southern tip of India. Lots of coconuts. They consume liberal amounts of coconut. Coconut meat, coconut milk, coconut oil. It's like one per day per capita. And they have the highest levels of cholesterol in India. Now that that that's like, you know, just because they have high cholesterol doesn't mean they're gonna have a heart attack. Oh, well they also have, this article is from India. Uh, there were several, there were several. Uh, they don't say CVD, we say cardiovascular disease, they say card coronary artery disease, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome, which is the pre-diabetes, because this was just attacking the pancreas. They have double, this is India, this is a poor part of India. India's in a lot of trouble right now because, um, they you know, after all the borders are closed everywhere and they're so overpopulated, and everybody's moved into the city and the cities don't have enough food. People in the mountains are doing good. They have plenty of food because then the tourists are there. All right, this part of India that eats vegetarian based, they have double the US rate. Remember that food that I've shown you that Americans eat? You've seen the videos of total cholesterol over 240, 32% of the population. And then Sri Lanka, also off the southern tip, 80% of the fat comes from coconut. They also have some of the highest levels of cardiovascular disease. Cholesterol raising effects of coconut oil are similar or higher than that of butter and meat. And yeah, there's more. You can go and look into it. I cannot and will not recommend that you ever use coconut oil. There is no safe oils out there. And I keep going on this for a few minutes. This is me when I did the Oregon Coast Trail on my bike. And that's me letting go of the coconut oil. And there's Paul in blue <laughs> to witness it. And I think it would, this is, I did it the smart way. Joey followed me in the van uh, with all the stuff. So I, <laughs> this is all I carried was my little fanny pack or something which had whatever my food was for the day. And I was like gonna do it in four days. I was gonna do 80 to 100 miles a day and the first day I was doing great. And then I hit that first huge hill out of Cannon Beach and I was like, oh my gosh, this hill never ends. And then Joey went past me in our car and I'm like, oh, please tell me you're gonna stop. And thankfully Joey did stop. And I said, Joey, you see, at the bottom of the hill, there's a campground right there. Wait for me there. And so he did. And there was a sign in front of the campground. And it said, we are full. And I said, oh my gosh, you're not going to have a spot. And Joey said, they always have a spot for us. Every time you have ever gone and asked, they have a spot. So we went. And it was the grumpiest, like, ranger of all time. And he was so bummed he had a spot. We got a spot there. And then the next day I only went like 30 miles, 50 miles. Anyway, the next day I went 30 miles. We stayed, um, can't remember now. Anyway, it was the nicest campground guy ever. He was so happy and jolly. Like that man who had that, yeah, remember the compassionate guy. All right, let's talk about olive oil. Do your talk on olive oil. There's all those health benefits. Has to be extra virgin means the first pressing. Extra virgin olive oil is the first pressing. So one of the things is all the other ones were from seeds, sunflower, safflower oils and stuff. Um, and it's going to be much harder to get it. You have to extract it. They usually have to use solvents like hexane, whereas olive oil, you can just press it. Um, I had somebody who came, had visited Europe and they brought me back pumpkin oil. And it was a guy who actually had a press in his backyard the way his grandpa had always done it. Um, anyway, I, I can't recommend any oils. Uh, so it lowers cholesterol, and that is even though it's a monounsaturated, and it does have certain compounds in it, can be really healthy. Uh, we'll get to why in a moment. These are some other things you can polish your furniture with your olive oil. You can polish your shoes. You can treat lice because you suffocate them. And the ugly truth, there is no safe oil. All oils have been processed and they have all been oxidized, even olive oil. You should not be cooking with any of them because it oxidizes them, even olive oil. 
the heat that you get to. There is no safe oil, period. I can send you on to the talks. So avocado, avocado oil is not, it is processed food. They've extracted it from the whole food. Eating avocados, I eat half an avocado every day. Uh, and they don't ripen until they're picked. And this is why they turn brown once you open them. There is this enzyme in them. And the enzyme becomes activated once it's exposed to oxygen. And that is why it starts turning brown. So there's a trick where you take the avocado before you cut it and open it, and you plunge it into boiling water for eight seconds. You gotta count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And it actually changes the color of the skin of the avocado. And then you plunge it into cold water. That boiling inactivates the enzyme, but it doesn't cook the avocado. So if you're making guacamole for the potluck, it will keep it beautiful for like 24 hours. Uh, anyway, it is mostly monounsaturated and it does tend to have lots of cool benefits. And I've had people do this as their topic too because they could find really fun memes of avocados for their slideshow, um, but also because they loved avocados. Uh, but the oil is processed, you can't do the oil. There is also a bunch of very, very smart scientists who say there you should not do um, any fats, like really low fats, just a small handful of nuts a day. Um, and then there are some who say, no, avocados, half an avocado a day, not like this crazy thing where people are eating so many avocados a day. Um, all right, nuts are amazing. There's little avocados, not cute. You can make an avocado hat. All right, um, so cooking without oil, talked about it. There is no safe oil. I can't emphasize this enough. There is no safe oil that you can cook with. You can't cook with oil. I didn't believe you could cook. I cook everything from scratch pretty, yeah, I cook everything from scratch. Uh, you saute with water or with broth. You have to be there the whole time because it cooks, it can um, stick. I Somebody from yoga, when I used to do yoga, gave me a very special frying pan that has a ceramic coating where things don't stick. Um, but you just, it's, it's amazing. Um, the food comes out so beautiful, vibrant colors because you don't have the greasy oil. I have trouble going, um, yeah, I pretty much can't eat at restaurants because it's so greasy, the food. Um, it's, and you can, the flavor still is there. So, the SOS diet, if you've never heard of it, SOS means no salt, oil, or sugar. Um, so you have all that butter, you don't know what to do with it. There you go. Make a sculpture. Take a picture, send it in. Give you some bonus points just for the fun of it. This guy got the red ribbon. I think the, the dragon should have gotten the blue. This one's pretty intricate too. All right. So there are no healthy oils. None. No healthy oils that you can cook with. You gotta keep it real. So you're like, but I wanna do a salad. Can't I just put some olive oil on it? So I used to teach, okay, if you're not cooking with the olive oil, just a little bit, but this is what I do. I make my own salad dressing, and I will sometimes, when I put it into my little blender thing, I will throw a couple of olives in there. Uh, so you're making it fresh, so it doesn't have the same time, but um, this is, you can just Google, no oil salad dressings and you get tons of recipe and really all you do or you can look up any salad dressing and in place of where they have oil you just use water uh, and you won't even notice it. If you want to add something you can add something like tahini. Tahini is sesame. That's all it is. It's straight sesame that's um, been pulverized so there is some um, fat in there or you can use an avocado. Um, like half an avocado in with all of this. Add garlic. Now a little bit of honey. This is Joey and Rowdy's favorite. It's a honey mustard dressing. Uh, and then you can add any of the spices, your favorite spices and stuff. Um, I don't actually, sometimes I use both vinegar and lemon. Uh, sometimes I'll use lime if I use an avocado, but I usually make the salad dressing every two days. Um, just because 
if this, if this gets to be time consuming. Uh, and sometimes I make it with berries and I don't put any kind of um, avocado or tahini or anything. All right, so what about baking? I love baking, you guys aren't getting any of my bakes. So this was, this was a fun slide I found today. Substitutes for butter in baking. Really, coconut oil? And then all of these highly processed fake fats, they're, they're all fake. <laughs> Like vegan butter, I love this, vegan donuts. Like they opened a vegan donut place just because it says vegan, it's fake. It's highly processed. And so there you go. We're gonna cast off the evil oils. No, none of them. So there we go. Applesauce is one choice. I think best all around substitute, monkey's got it right. Banana is the best substitute and you just, mash it, a really ripe banana. When you get those ripe bananas in place of, um, these are some other ones you can use. You can use pumpkin or sweet potato. Uh, you can use applesauce. You can use mashed avocado. That's what Rocky's wanting. There says, yes, my, my cat eats avocados. I don't know why, my dog too, they go crazy. And yes, that's, that's he's so excited. Usually his tail is switching back and forth. I didn't do the video. Uh, and then the owl, the owl and the fairy whispered to me and she told me, and this is what I use, is I use aqua faba. So aqua as in water and faba, F-A-B-A. -A. Uh, it is the oil. So if you open a can of chickpeas, save, it's not oil, sorry, save the water that you soak the chickpeas, that you cook the chickpeas in. It's even better if you cook your own chickpeas, but save it. I save it in a mason jar and I just label it and it's good for about a week and I use that. Um, there's all these things online that tell you you have to do stuff to it. I stopped doing all of that. I like add apple cider vinegar and how to make vegan butter with aquafaba. I just do a straight substitute in there and everything I've ever made with the aquafaba, people are like, this is so delicious. And again, the only thing I use for sugar, so I don't use any oil. Um, and then in baking, I just use aquafaba uh, and it's phenomenal. And then sometimes I'll use a banana depending on what I'm making. And sometimes I might add peanut butter or tahini. Um, and just make sure you always clean up your mess and finger licking good maybe. Uh, and I have this chart, I can't remember why. Uh, it's food combining, which gets really confusing. But the thing that was interesting, like combine this with that or not with this, look at over here. They've known this for hundreds of years. You can't combine these. They don't, they make everything. They inhibit the secretion of gastric juice, slow digestion, and your food already has the perfect amount for your needs. All right, thank you very much. I have to figure out how to stop recording. Joey's whispering to me, I hope you all have a nice night.